Okay, tonight we have um, a review of the passive voice, which we did in unit seven and exercises. And since we have a small class tonight, we'll see how far we get through the exercises. At least the, uh, the review, I hope, will be, uh, be helpful. So I will mute everybody and we will begin with our opening prayer. In nomine Patris et Fili et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum. Benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in hora mortis nostrae. Amen. Gloria Patri et Filio et Spiritui Sancto, sicut erat in principio et nunc et semper, et in saecula saeculorum. Amen. All right. Uh, actually, we're going to do a quick review of the ablative first, just to dust off the cobwebs. Uh, um, we had six uses of the ablative so far. Uh, don't worry, we're going to get more later on. But um, we had the <clears throat> ablative of separation, meaning from, uh, usually using a uh, op uh, or ops, although it doesn't have to, the a the, uh, uh, ops doesn't have to be in there. Um, an example of where it was is in the uh, Our Father, Libera no Samalo. But you could say libera nos malo, but I think libera, I, libera nos malo kind of flows a little better. So uh, I suspect that's why it in there. We had the ablative of means uh, with, uh, for example, Peter cut off the ear or cut the ear off with a sword, uh, cum gladio, or just gladio really, uh, for inanimate objects. Uh, ablative of manner, Peter loved the Lord with zeal, dominum, with great zeal, I should say, dominum, manio, uh, oh, that's, whoa, oh, okay, sorry, man, that doesn't match, okay, this is dominum, manio, gaudio, laudamus, we praise the Lord with great zeal. Um, hmm, that must be a it must be something with the copy and paste I did there. I didn't notice. Ablative of accompaniment, meaning um, uh, with, uh, as in Peter went with John, cum Petro venit, with Peter he went in Latin. Let me fix this. Uh, Peter, oh my, uh, this should be we praised, yeah, there we go, the Lord with zeal or with great joy, might be better. So uh, we had the ablative of personal agency. I refer to that as the whodunit. Uh, the ablative of means is for inanimate, inanimate objects, meaning with a sword, okay? Whereas um, this is um, uh, personal agency is for animate objects. So, uh, nostra peccata a Cristo delentur, meaning our sins are deleted, forgiven, destroyed, by Christ. And Christus crucifixus est apilato. You have to use the a, uh, the a, the, the a, a ops with the ablative form in this particular case. You don't have to in the ablative of means. It's opticum is optional. And in fact, generally speaking, you will see it more, you will see it more often than not without it. And then lastly, the ablative of certain adjectives like dinus, indinus, um, let me put some spaces in there, planus, uh, used in the sense of of, 
like Ave Maria, gratia plena, Hail Mary, full of grace. Um, and so those are the six major uses we've had so far. So I said, we'll get some more. These really aren't all that they may seem a little strange at first, but they're not all as um, complicated as they may see, because we know the ah, ah, ops means from. So all it is saying is, is that you put this, and, and we know that ah, ah, ops uses the ablative in the first place. So, um, this really is, is, all it's saying is, is you can leave that ah uh, 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 off, which in English you can't. You can't say, deliver us evil. <laughs> uh, well, actually you can, but that sounds like you just put in an order for evil, you know, for in your Amazon account. You want, you know, deliver us evil, Amazon. Deliver us flowers, Amazon. So in English, or in, in Latin, <laughs> Yeah, so in Latin, you can uh, leave that, uh, that preposition out if you want. And ablative of means, uh, all that means is sort of the same thing. You can use the word cum, with, but more often than not, you just drop it out and you just say gladio, okay? Uh, ablative of manner is the same idea. Uh, you can use it uh, with or without cum. Now, I will warn you, though, that it, it, that's only if you have an adjective with the noun. If you just have this standalone noun, gaudio, then you have to put the cum in there. Uh, otherwise, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, ablative of accompaniment with cum or sine, uh, meaning with or without, again, is essentially, um, you know, cum, we, we, we would put a with in there anyway, so not too surprising. Uh, the ah, uh, ah, uh, ops is not, whoop, I see my wife vanished. There we go, she's back. The ah, uh, ah, uh, ops, um, besides, uh, can mean, or by, or for, uh, or from. And so um, for persons or in a, for animate objects, then it is uh, required. And then the certain adjectives, well, that's just the way Latin is. But again, it's not too, too bizarre. So any, qu oh, any questions on the ablative? Let's start with that. Hey, Michael. Yes. How important is it that we know the different ablatives? Because when you read that essay, the uh, learning Latin by the Dowling method, he kind of poo pooed that. He said, just remember they're all ablatives. Yes. And well, um, if you're reading, then uh, yeah, it should read pretty much. Uh, just be in my uh, be advised. You may have to throw in an extra word in there. Uh, for example, uh, I think I, I, I forgot uh, what I um, uh, I forget what the example sentence um, uh, was. I, I had with Peter cut off the ear of the servant with a sword. Uh, you know, if you just see a gladio there, you don't have the preposition, so you have to supply it. Um, so yeah, the the first rule, if you're just reading Latin, is uh, if it's if it looks a little off, stick the appropriate preposition in there, and it'll come out fine. Um, it's a little more important if you're writing the Latin, because then you want to use the you know the the proper grammatical form. Makes sense. So, so it helps to kind of know the different forms of the or different uses of the ablative. Yeah, and I wouldn't I wouldn't that. get too hung up on um, you know. Let me put it this way: grammarians, hey, they got to make a living like we do, so they have to come up with terms for everything in grammar. And um, you know, I, I wouldn't want the grammarians and their children to starve or live under bridges in San Francisco or L.A. You know that. 
So they, they have to they have to be very um, methodical in their in their descriptions. Um, so it's just a way of talking about it. So, but yes, the ablative is generally used. You know, you have the you have the subject, you have the main, you know, you have the verb, you have the indirect object, and then you have how it was done. Um, so Christ was crucified by Pilate. So. Any other questions? All right. Passive voice verbs. Okay. We had these last time, which was a long, long time ago. Oh, by the way, I have all of the videos up. I, I owed uh, three videos to the uh, uh, Annunciation YouTube website. And for those of you who did not attend, oh, my wife dropped off again. Oh, well. For those of you that did not attend uh, the um, class last week, uh, since it was light attendance, I did what any other sensible teacher would do in, in a physical school, and I showed movies to the class. They were, of course, Latin movies, so, and we talked about them. So if you want, um, when you get a chance, uh, jump over to YouTube and the Annunciation uh, YouTube channel, and then the, uh, the, the, uh, the Latin section and you can watch through those. But passive voice verbs, um, instead of the subject doing the action, which is active voice, passive voice verbs are done to the subject. Active, I am reading a book, Lego Librum. Passive, the book is being read, Liber Legitur. Uh, in the case of the active, you know who's doing it. In the case of the passive, you don't know who's doing it. Somebody is reading a book, uh, but you do know that the book is being read or the book is read. And we have a number of passive voice verbs um, um, that we use in the liturgy. Um, I'll come back to some of those later. Uh, but they're, they're scattered throughout there. And curiously, Latin has some passive voice verbs that are used in an active sense. Uh, they're called deponent verbs. Um, oh, there she is. Uh, I did not, um, I, the, the book will discuss those, what, what those are later, but they are, they are passive voice form. And um, we'll get to those. But for now, we're just going to do regular passive voice verbs. So um, more examples. God loves us. Deus nos diligit. Okay. Passive voice. We are loved by God. Nos adeo diligimur. Now notice we got to use the adeo by God. We can't just put deo in there all by himself. We got to put the I in there, so that's an ablative. But you know, when reading that, when reading that, is pretty easy to see. I'm, I'm just pointing it out. I have a question. Sure. Uh, I'm not familiar with diligent, and that's my my fault. But why we're not using the amo? Is that a different form of love that would not be appropriate in this case? Okay, that is a very excellent question. Um. Answer isn't quite so simple, but it's an excellent question. The okay, amo amare does mean uh, I love amare to love, etc. But it is generally seen as uh, a romantic love. Okay. So I would say to my wife. Amo te, I love you. Okay. Um, I love cookies. Well, I, I hope I'm not in a romantic relation with cookies, 
or for that matter, is anybody else, uh, you would not say um, amo crustula, uh, crustulum. Crustulum means a uh, little crusty thing, literally, is, is often translated or used for cookie. So amo crustula means um, uh, I, I, I have a thing for cookies. <laughs> Uh, and and not in the uh, the um, uh, sort of in the romantic sense. Now you can use amo. I, I don't want to be too. Um, I don't want to draw the line too too finely. Uh, words, you know, words have. There's no. There are very few words that have a single meaning. Okay. Um, especially verbs, they 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 have a, a range of meanings, meanings, and so uh, amo could you could say uh, amo crostula. I love cookies. Jerome, who wrote the Vulgate, which was not the first translation of the the Greek and and Hebrew into Latin. Uh, they're almost, uh, there, there's that, we actually have what's known as the old Latin that came before that, but he was tasked with putting it together in a, in a sensible fashion and, and making a standardized edition. He always used uh, diligent or uh, diligo, diligere, uh, to emphasize that this was, in, in Greek, for example, you have eros, from which we get erotic, etc., which is the romantic love, versus agape, which is the platonic love, if you want to call it that. And so he always used diligent and diligimur, okay? And so I'm kind of continuing that tradition. And, uh, uh, and in fact, if you go to the famous uh, line in the Gospels, where Jesus says, uh, love your um, neighbor as yourself, uh, he, the uh, Jerome uses uh, diligo, or, or in this case, diligite, love, uh, proximum tuum, your neighbor, sequit, um, you love yourself, uh, um, diligitis, Vos, as you love yourselves. So um, that's why I, I did it differently or did it this way. Okay, so we have agape, which is like a brotherly type love toward the fellow man. We have. I, I prefer, I prefer, yeah, I prefer the word platonic, but. Platonic, yeah, same like idea. Word. Same okay. Idea. And then we have eros, which is the lust, and then. Alma, well, I wouldn't call romantic. it necessarily lust exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's normally the you know what we see it in now. And, and, well, and okay, you know, yeah, I, I know. Kind of love. Yeah. What is the? Uh, isn't there another word? Another word for like filial type love? Platonic. Yeah, here we go. Platonic. Platonic love. There's platonic love. Is... Yeah. Well, that's what Diligo is. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Philios, I think, is what the Greeks called it. Uh, um, no, they called it agape. Oh, uh, oh yeah, okay. Um, agape, I think, is like uh, more yeah, like yeah, yeah. Kind of right, unconditional love. Yeah, here, I'll do a quick... Uh, let me go to English. Let me do a quick... There we go. Let me do a quick uh, verb. Amo diligo. Well, okay. If you really want to know all the kinds of love out there, now that I've consulted my dictionary, uh, Adamo, A-D-A-M-O, is to fall in love and lust with, passionate. Uh, Ardeo, which means to be on fire. Um, and there's um, Tepeo, which is kind of a um, warm, fuzzy love. <laughs> But really, uh, amo is is at least um, in the Vulgate, um, and in most of the liturgy, is generally refers to the uh, romantic love, whereas diligo 
is more of the uh, platonic or fraternal or caritas charity type love. I, I can't help but think of the fact that in English we had we have one word for snow it's snow and the Eskimos have I think 32 different words for snow that talk about the different qualities and sometimes it's your culture that determines uh, your yeah. understanding of these words yeah it is definitely um, now having said that There is a well-known Latin hymn, Ego Amo Te, which was written by um, St. Francis de Sales, St. Francis Xavier. Wow, I've forgotten now. Um, and he uses it. So again, don't, don't cast it totally in concrete that Amo can't be used that way, but certainly, uh, um, uh, Diligo is very much a more, um, you know, to love, hold dear, esteem, favor, have a special regard for. It's, it's much milder than, um, than, than Amo. So, um, I guess remember, I have to remember that kind of love you're diligent in, in a relationship with someone. Yeah, that'll help you keep these strikes. I see that. I think of someone being diligent. So, um, yes, uh, it does have. Um, yeah, yeah. There, there is an element there. All right, let's move on. Uh, active, but that, that's a very good. Yeah, that's a very good, um, very good uh, um, question. In other words, it's hard work. It's not necessarily easy. <laughs> Yeah, the um, and, and and strictly speaking, English is the same way. We should say one likes cookies, one does not love cookies. You know, but we don't speak for yourself. <laughs> well, what I mean is, is love is generally between people. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so. Um, but yeah, I mean, you certainly use that. Everybody uses it that way. So um, anyway, where was I? Okay. The Pope baptizes the girl. Papa Puellum baptizat. Papa, the Pope baptizes the girl. And then passive, you can either translate it as the girl is being baptized by the Pope or the girl is baptized by the Pope. So Puella baptizatur a papa so again since the pope is a, is is not an inanimate object we we do have to use the uh, the a in there in the ablative so endings uh, whoops what's this guy hiding behind here whoa all right hmm okay i hope that didn't come out that way in the notes Rules for active and passive voice. Uh, very straight forward set of rules. You take the root, you add the congr the congregational, <laughs> the conjugation vowel, and then add the endings. It not that much different from the active. In the case of the active, it's O S T mustisint. Uh, and in the passive, it's O-R, RIS, TOUR, MORE, MINI, and IN TOUR. Uh, so um, in both cases, you're going to take the root, the conjugation vowel, and add the ending. Now, he does say in the book that the second person uh, passive singular besides R, R, I, S, can also end in R, E. So it ends up being the same in form as the infinitive. Uh, generally, it's not seen that way unless you're using the imperative form. So uh, if the misere or to, to I have mercy. So when we say have mercy, uh, oh Lord, it's miserere. So we take the miser and the the e r e, and this is the infinitive form. Uh, so you will see it in the um, in the imperative form, 
and a few other places, but generally speaking, it's the RIS form ending. And for now, I'm going to always use RIS or the RIS ending, except in an imperative form. So what do we have? All right, first conjugation. Laudo, laudare, laudavi, laudat, laudatus. Remember that remember all four. The active root is laud. Add the A, that's the conjugation vowel. Notice it's the same. And then the endings. So except for the endings, it's identical. So we add the uh, the OR, so laudo, I praise, laudor, I am praised, or I am being praised, laudas, thou praiseth, laudaris, thou art praised. And I will include the, uh, the, um, the infinitive looking form just for completeness. Laudat, he, she, it praises, laudator, he, she, it is praised. Laudamus, we praise. Laudamur, we are praised. Laudatus, you praise. Laudamini, you are praised. Laudant, they praise. Laudantur, they are praised. So, any questions there? Okay. So, if I want to say you are praised, I say laudamini. Well, if there are more than one of me, yes. No, I meant singular. Okay. Then that is laudaris. Yes, because the U in English is ambiguous. Okay, thanks. I suppose I should have put in my y'all in there. There we go. There. <laughs> so for the y'all, that keeps it straight for me. That keeps it straight, yeah. There. <laughs> How's that? So, Thank you. yeah, actually, I guess even, I guess actually even in uh, English, y'all can, uh, can be singular or plural. Hmm. Actually, I'm going to consult. Strictly speaking, no, because it's you all, and all implies plural. That's not necessarily how people use it but that's yeah. actually what it means. Yeah, okay. It should be you all, which implies, okay. L lots of allness. Yeah, lots of allness. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at the dictionary. Used in direct address, address to two or more persons or to one person who represents a family, meaning not just you, you, but you and your clan. So, okay, we're safe. That's a, it's plural. All right. So yeah, you would say, uh, laudatus, thou art praised. Okay, same thing with second conjugation, ERE verbs. Uh, our usual pattern is moneo, monera, monui, monitus, to warn, to advise. Same thing, active root is mon, add the long E, and then the appropriate ending. So it's the same thing. So moneo, I warn, moneor, I am warned, mones, monet, monemus, monetis, monent. But down here, moneor, moneris, monetur, monemur, monemini, monentur. And if you see a mini ending, you are guaranteed that that is the, uh, there, we'll, we'll convert these to y'all. There we go. So that's not diminutive, right? <laughs> uh, not in Latin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the mini ending is uh, always um, uh, third, second person plural uh, passive voice. Okay, I'm going to have to remember that because that's not what it I associated it with. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Yep. All right. All right. Let me put in my y'all in here. There we go.
there. Uh, same thing, only for a third conjugation, we're going to use an I. So if you remember the active voice form, duco, duchis, duchit, ducimus, ducitis, ducunt, and some of these I and the, the third conjugation likes to drop the, um, the, um, the I-U-N-T in favor of, um, uh, well, it, the, the I is, is muted into a U. Uh, the same thing is true of the passive, ducor, I am led, ducharis, thou art led, ducitur, ducimur, Ducimini uh, du and Ducontur. So we see that U sticking in there. Um, you see that in, in a lot of verbs that in the third person plural, the, they stick a U there instead of whatever Thanks. the model is. Can you pronounce the uh, plural uh, Ducimini again? Du, okay, the, this is long, this is short, right. and this is short. So it's this guy that gets the um, the accent. So do chi mini. Okay, the the long ending vowel thing was throwing me off. Yeah, um, well that's the long and that's the long, but the accent is right there on the I. Here, I'll throw that. Well, that's worse. That, that makes it look like a contraction. Uh, let's see, oh, I know, hold on, hold on. I can do this. Uh, uh, there. I don't know. Does that help any? Yes. Yeah, and um, I did. I did post on the Facebook group an outstanding video on the importance of those macrons. Well, the macrons are like training wheels. <laughs> Well, it's for, yeah, it's it, it's an in particular, it was about how Latin, uh, you know, ancient Latin poetry was not based on rhyme, but on meter. Yes. And if you use the macron, text the meter, and he read a bunch of uh, poetry, and you can hear it. Yeah. Was that Scorpio? Do you know, that was probably... Um... Luke. Yes, yes, yeah. it was. Yes, yeah. Vowel and, and quantities. The poetry is amazing. You you yes. could start tapping your feet like you were listening to the beat of good music. Yeah, yeah. Latin ancient Latin poetry was based on vowel quantities, as they were called, and not rhyme. And so if you were to look at um poems from Catullus. Uh, they, the, the, the meter and the vowel quantities would be what forms the, the poem. Um, ending rhymes started to appear around the seventh and eighth centuries. Um, before then, uh, some of the, and you can see that by the way, if you go to my webpage and look up some of the hymns by Ambrose, for example, uh, there was no rhyme in there. And, and it's fascinating when you you pay attention to the long and short vowels, and then you hear it spoken. It's like somebody who knows, um, who's perfectly memorized a song and is reciting it without the music. And you can hear the meter. Um, it's amazing, and it makes you really realize the important of, importance of these um, marks for the long and short vowels. Oh, yeah. Well, um, I posted a thing a while back. What was it? April. I think it's April 17th is the traditional birthday of Rome. And um, the Romans did have a calendar based on the founding of Rome. And so this year was the 200, sorry, the 2,775th birthday of Rome. And the way they abbreviate it was op urbe um, condita. 
up from Urbe City Condita founding, from the founding of Rome. If you put the law, if you switch the stress to Condita, then you have from the pickling of the city. Con yeah, Condita uh, <laughs> is founding. Condita is where we get condiment, right? Condiment, that's, yeah. Uh, and that's where we get condiment. So, um, oh, where can you find that article without getting on Facebook? Um, I'm not uh, oh wait, wait. Was that um, okay, Francis? That was uh, that was um, that was Scorpio. That's on YouTube. Is YouTube okay? I, I can give you the article there or the link for the article. Yeah, the one I posted was the link to YouTube. Yeah, hold on. Just give me a second. Give me just a second to dig that up. Yeah, Facebook's gotten to be a bit of a Yes, let's see here. All right, enunciation Latin class. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 here we go. Let me, uh, oh, I don't know about the Romans wrote with make. Well, then they may have written some of their poetry. The Latin backgrounds. language has the Hold on. Now, you got to keep in mind. Actually, he does, in the thing I posted, he does talk about how they did write with them. Yeah, it depends on who and yeah, when. Yeah, that's true. All right, there is the YouTube video. Now, keep in mind that Scorpio is a, um, I, I have a high regard for the man. The man is, studies Latin. He produces excellent videos, but he is generally uh, does classical Latin as opposed to ecclesiastical. So you will hear certain differences when he speaks. It doesn't bother me. Um, it also time. doesn't bother him. He mentions in several of his yeah, videos will, that it's just like listening. Yeah, he will switch. A different he can, accent. And he can switch very well between the two. He has a number of ecclesiastical or videos done in ecclesiastical that Latin. So anyway. OK, so uh, yeah, that is YouTube. Is that OK, Francis? Yeah, yeah, you don't have to log in or anything. You can do YouTube anonymously. All right. Well, we might not get to the, uh, well, we might not get to the exercises anyway. Uh, but, you know, we've had a while off, so it's good to review. So third conjugation, IO verbs. Remember, third conjugation has the ERE verbs and it has the IO verbs. So we saw duco, ducera, duxi, ductus. And then the IO verbs, copio, if it's capeta. And, and you got to look at both the first person and the infinitive. Because if we go down here, you can't just say IO on the first person, because audio and audira, uh, you know, that looks like an IO, but this is fourth conjugation. So you got to look at both the first person singular and the infinitive. Um, same idea, capio, capis, capit, capimus, capitis, capiunt, capior, caperis, capitur, capimur, uh, capimini, capiuntur. So, and then last is audio, uh, just like we did the Audi, out, out, you know, the Audi is the, um, I'm not talking about the car here. Uh, Audi is the root, and you add the endings. Uh, same here for the passive. Audior, audiris, auditur, audimur, audimini. Uh, and this is long, so that's definitely accented. And that is not. Uh, and audiuntur. So um, what I also did last time is I put together the present tense summary. So you guys can have it in one place. I also added the imperative forms. We have had the imperative forms. So the first person, sorry, the second person singular imperative forms are just like the second person singular imperative form. 
but you drop the S. So laudas, lauda, uh, mones, monet, just like the painter, duchess, duke. Um, duke is kind of a funny one. It, you drop the, um, you, you drop that last vowel on, on it. There's a couple of words where they just drop the last vowel. Uh, but anyway, capio, cape. And again, these are ERE verbs. So this is where the E appears. Uh, audio, audi, and then for the plural form. So lauda is thou shalt praise. <laughs> and laudate would be, uh, um, you know, pray, y'all praise. There we go. Monet. So mo, 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 monet would be, no, it wouldn't be monet. It would be monet, right? No, long e, monete. No, M O N E T. Uh, up higher. Oh, oh, you mean up here? No, wait. Yes. You, you said Monet. So I, no. Yeah, this is Monet. Monet. M O N. No, M O N E T. Right. What about it? You wouldn't say Monet. No, you'd it say Monet. Monet, Monet is down here. <laughs> Sorry, I misunderstood. Monet is the imperative form. Ah, okay. Singular. Thank you. Yeah. So it's not moan. <laughs> We're not moaning. Uh, yeah, it doesn't rhyme with zone or moan, but Monet. Uh, speak for yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Monet, uh, unlike the painter. And then Monete. Yeah. All right. And then here's the complete table for passive tense. And there is an imperative form. Okay. Uh, the imperative form is even easier because it's simply the second person verb form. Okay, so laudare, that's where you, this is where the, why this, these endings, version of the endings have been joined on there. So laudare, uh, monera, uh, ducere, capere, and audire. So uh, if you say, uh, I don't, imperative, audire, it means um, be heard, <laughs> okay? Laudare would be uh, be praised. Uh, laudamini would also be be praised, but it would be plural form. So, um, so that is a nice table of all of the passive voice we've had so far. Are there any questions? Michael? Yeah. The La Domine, you said be praised, but that is the imperative form. So if you were to say, like, God be praised, it'd be different than looking at someone saying, parentheses, you be praised, right? Yes, OK. This is the imperative passive forms. So laudamini would be you is, would be be praised, all of you. If you would say praise God, then you would use laudate because you're saying you all praise God. Whereas here, okay, okay, I, I didn't, I didn't say it right. If you are using, okay, let's say Ladamini, okay, and that is the imperative form of y'all be praised, right? But if you're talking, how do I say this? But if you are talking to, to the group and like you're wishing for them to be praised, would that be a different word or would it be the same one? I'm not seeing a difference <laughs> between you all be praised and you be praised. So what? Okay, let's just pass on the question because I'm not sure if I'm thinking it through clearly enough to make it. Well, okay, if you're saying difference. something like God be praised, okay, that is imperative active. Because the impression, the the um, the the um, what you're saying there is, you 
praise God. Okay. All right. Okay. I think, I think you're getting what I was trying to get at. Or, okay, actually, wait a minute. Well, okay, you could also say, sorry, you could also say laudatur Deus, which literally means God is being praised, uh, which you could trans simplify in English to God be praised. And there you're not saying you do this, but that in general, God be praised. That's what I was trying to get at. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah. If you mean it in general, then you would use uh, the, the third person. Okay. Okay. All right. As opposed Thank to you. saying, you know, you, Teresa, <laughs> praise God. <laughs> you know, you would say, uh, and uh, yeah, laudatur. And actually, what you would probably say, um, we haven't gotten to it yet, but you would probably say laudetur and switch that to the subjunctive, which uh, then means let God be praised. We, we really haven't had the let uh, form of the verbs yet, but um, we'll get to that. But so laudatur Deus. Would, or maybe in English, may God be praised. Well, then you'd use laudetur. You'd use the oh, subjunctive Oh, okay. Form. Yeah, the subjunctive form implies... Like okay, a desire. The reason we said this is indicative is it is a statement about what is happening. The subjunctive expresses potentiality and permission. So, um, um, it's not a fact. So if we said laudatur Deus, that would mean God is being praised, okay? Passive voice, and it means Somebody is praising him. If we say laudetur Deus, then that would be, may God be praised. It also means let God be praised. There's no real distinction in, in Latin between the two. So, um, so yeah, we'll hopefully get to the subjunctive. I want to get to the subjunctive for my own use because I need to review it myself. So <laughs> I, I, I hope we get to it. All right, any questions on that before we hit the homework for which we have 30 minutes, so which we may or may not get all the way to, but that's all right. All right, let's tackle the homework and we'll see how far we can get. Okay, Latin, audiris. I'll give you a hint, these are all uh, passive voice verbs. So, audiris means don't all shout at once. Yes, you are being heard. Yes, so, uh, let me, whoops, hold on, just give me a second here. I need to make my window a little bit bigger. There we go. And then I can go over there and I can make that uh, there, there we go. Thou art heard, whoa, uh, that's a little big. So, let me, okay, there we go. And then what is the plural form? Audimini, right? So, uh, 
This way may seem a little cumbersome, but this way I don't have to type it in. And for those of you that have been here, well, you've been here long enough to know that typing is not one of my superior skill, at least uh, typing on the fly anyway. Okay, copy tour. Right, he, she, it is being taken, is being uh, uh, captured. <laughs> no, no, I am, I, I'm not a herd. Uh, let's see here, there. And then the plural. Uh, copy on tour, right? Copy on tour. Whoop. Would help if I actually made it there. Good. Uh, Jungor. Now, this is a test to find out who has um, <laughs> memorized the. Uh, the um, vocabulary at the end of the book. Okay, Jungor is joined, okay? So, uh, um, I'm trying to think. Yeah, you know, we, we, we get the, um, the uh, English word with joined, and this is, um, uh, or let's see, I'm trying to, oh darn it, I can't think of the, um, um, not junction. Um, yeah, junction, I think, is where we get that. Or I mean, we get junction from it. Yes. All right. And then the plural, I shouldn't highlight it because then you can see it. Yes. Yep. All righty. Interesting. Yeah. And I'll uh, fix the sides, sizes here. There. Du contour. <laughs> no, it is not younger. <laughs> They are being led. Or they are being led. Tell you what, I'm going to set this down to 30 automatically. And I'm going to say update. There we go. And the, well, actually, uh, now we got to go to the singular. Ducci tour, yes. Oops, uh, there we go. And then Monet tour. He's, he, she, slash it is warned. Is being warned or is warned. Yeah, either one. I like to throw the being in there only because it's, it, it emphasizes the act of or the, the present tense. And then the plural. Oh, Monentour. Yeah, very good. All right. Delay mini. This does not refer to airport air travel. You are destroyed. You are destroyed, right. You are destroyed. Yes. And then singular. Delaris. Delaris. Yes. Yes. All right. <clears throat> Fugamur. This is another one. Yeah, this is, I believe this is, that was also from uh, this um, uh, chapter vocabulary. There we go. Let me squeeze that up a bit. And uh, 
Fugor, yes. Fugor, okay. Educheris. Thou art being let out. Yes. And the singular, yeah, Educhimini. I'm, I'm really trying not, not to say chimney. <laughs> or chimney, which would be, well, okay, I guess I could say chimney. I can't say chimney. <laughs> that, that, that would not work. Uh, tradimini. You are being betrayed. All being betrayed, yes. And... Traderis, yeah, it's an E R E, or um, yeah, Davis. Invenion Cooler. They are being found. Yes, they are being found. And then the singular. Invenitur. Invenitur, yes. Singular. There we go. Exaudi Moor. Exaudimur. Yes. Yeah. And um, okay. Um, if if we said Audimur, that is, we are just being heard because audio is to hear to listen. The exaudi. Um, The X there really means, you know, you've, you've, um, I, I don't know. In, in English, we would say here to hear out. <laughs> yeah, hear us out. Uh, but the impression, though, is, is, um, uh, yeah, yeah, hear us out. Yeah, that, that yeah, yeah, that, that's a, I like that. Yeah, I'll, I like that definition uh, because it is to listen, and we want you to listen favorably. Um, I was trying to somehow get in the X being from or out from trying to figure out how to uh, work a, uh, you know, uh, stick your ear out and listen to us or something that, that isn't working. Okay. Auxi, out, yeah. Exaudi more and then exaudi or. Yes. Okay. Exaudi or. There we go. Laudor. I am praised. Uh, yeah, I am praised. I am being praised. Either one. And then Laudamur. Yes. We are being praised. Okay, I think that's enough. Oh, now we got to switch. Yeah, that's right. Switch um, voice. Uh, so if it is in Laudat, which is in active then you've got to switch it to passive, well, meaning and then passive, and then the, uh, the uh, passive voice go back to active. So laudat. Uh, oh, right. He, she, it praises. And be very careful how you say that. Do not run that together. <laughs> oh, I have an I there. There we go. I, I should put an it in there. Well, no, that 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 probably doesn't look any better. Where's the there we go? Yeah, no, we'll do that. He she it praises and then uh, loud um, laudator. Yes, that was somewhat tricky because the last one was a <laughs> loud door. I was getting confused here. Okay, don amor. We are being given, yeah. And um, yes, and uh, do dare means just give. Uh, dona, donare is where we get donate. So we are being given is might be better translated as we are being 
um, gifted, <laughs> uh, donated. Eh, Trying to think of um, it, it's um, th there's a uh, donation implied in there somewhere, as opposed to just straight given. And then donamus. And in fact, <clears throat> in the liturgy, uh, Agnus Dei qui tolis peccata mundi miserere nobis miserere. The last one is dona nobis pacem, grant us peace. So you could even say we are, or maybe even better, yeah, we are being granted. That it might even be better because it's not just the plain given, you know, like da mihi um, crustula give me cookies, you know, not very polite. Uh, whereas if you said, dona mihi crustula, that would be grant me kick cookies, like give me cookies, please, sort of. Liberamini. You are being freed. You are being, oh, uh, there we go. You are being freed. And then, Liberatus, yes. You are freeing. Servant. They are keeping, yes, they are keeping, or they keep. Uh, it can also mean to preserve, um, as in, um, Oh, as in home canning. Yeah, but um, meaning to save. Yeah, to save. Yeah, to to yeah, save. All right, and the um, uh, servantur is the passive form. Vocas. You are calling, yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, how would, what if I said vocasne? What would that mean? Are you? Yeah. Keep going. Are you calling? Yes. Yes. Remember the NA, the NE uh, ending on the verb at the front turns it into a question. So I don't know about you, but you know, I've often shouted to somebody, are you calling me? So it'd be vocasne me. Are you calling me? Anyway, vocas goes to Vocaris, yes. Vocaris. Habentur. They are being had. Yeah, um, <laughs> that unfortunately, <laughs> English being the language it is, well, even Latin has double meanings. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, it's not so... <laughs> Yeah, when we see they are being had, yeah, exactly like suckers. <laughs> really what it means, a better translation might be they are being held because habeo and habara means to have, to hold, to possess you know, in, in that sense, as opposed to, yeah, yeah, as opposed to um, suckers. You, you are be, they are being had, so. Uh, Would I'm, another way of looking at it be like they were being had over for dinner or? Um, let me think. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, ooh, the problem is Habeo, let me check something here. Uh, yeah, yeah, actually, yes. Okay, Habeo, Habeo works. One of the other meanings is entertain. 
So, or as in, um, um, I, I mean, they're not, we're not possessing somebody for dinner. <laughs> it, it's not a, um, not like they're being dinner itself. They're yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what, what's the, uh, what's the old joke? Um, um, How, how does it work? Yeah, whether you leave the comma out or not. Let's see. Oh, uh, yeah. Let's have my uncle, comma, Jack over for dinner or had Jack for dinner. But yeah, yeah, time. yeah, yeah. Make sure the comma's in there. And there's an original uh, Twilight Zone. I know it's a black and white. I remember seeing it black and white. And aliens come to Earth and yeah. they basically solve all of our problems and there's no more war. They put up barriers between the countries you can't fight and everything so everyone gets rid of all their weapons and everything and and everyone just thinks of the really nice people and say well why don't we take y'all to our planet you, you can see how we live and so people start piling on these you know uh spaceships to leave and then as this one scientist who's part of the original greeting group is about to get onto the spaceship uh, another one of his colleagues, a lady, comes walking up. We've translated this book. Everyone was happy about this book because the title of it that they managed to translate was How to Serve Man. Yes. And, and then yes. it turns out that's, she's calling it, it's a recipe book. It's a recipe book. So that's from a famous short story. Yeah. But they did a great job in the Twilight Zone. Yeah. 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 It, was, it was first a short story. Yeah. And the, um, the picture there is an alien uh the spaceship and it says to serve man and you know the 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 uh connotation being um intentionally ambiguous so oh yeah all right anyway habentur so habent yeah. habent habent all right Miss Chaitur. He, she, it is being mixed. mixed. Yes. And we have um, we have a word in English that I can't think of what that comes from that, and I can't think of what it. Um, oh well. And Can you change how that how that is actually being or would be used. He's Pardon? being mixed. What the heck does that mean? Oh, uh, like the water is being mixed with wine. Or the wine is being mixed with water. But how is he being mixed? I understand the context of that particular verb. It's saying that it can oh. be he, she, or it. In yeah. this case, it really only works for it. That's true. Uh... Well, I don't know, you know, maybe if you're a cannibal and you have a big pot. Yeah, but you get into the you are being mixed and I am being mixed. And so <laughs> unless they're part of a recipe. Yeah, that's yeah. right. <laughs> or is that that's... just, it, it's just have to accept it as a verb form and it yeah. may not have been used. Um, yeah, I can't think of... Um... I can't think of a good example where it's a person, um, but well, oh, now keep in mind though, keep in mind. All right. I guess you're referring to like America as being like a melting pot. Yeah. You could say like, you can, if you're talking about the immigrants, you could say that they're all mixing together. But that when yeah. you usually use the they, not he, yeah. she. Is. Anyway, let's change it to. Miss Chet. Miss Chet. Yes. Uchitis. Y'all are leading. You all are leading. Yeah. And I actually use the y'all there, there. And. Do too many. Mm. Yes. I was about to say something. That would have been wrong. Poor per contour. Yes, per duco is to lead. Per duco is to lead through. 
So Père du Contour is, uh, they are being led through. And the active is Père du Cunt. Yes, there we go. Ah, uh, Capio. Yeah, to take, um, you can also use it in the sense of um, grasp or, and, and you can, it is used in the um, uh, sense of, I, I grasp what you were saying. So, um, uh, Capio, uh, uh, um, quid uh, dicis, I, I grasp what you were saying. And the passive form is Capior, yes. Recipitur. He, she, it is being taken back. Uh, yeah, yeah. Very cheap it, yes. In Venus, you are finding, you are discovering. In Venus. In Venetis. No, sorry, in Venetis. In Venetis. Yeah, that's an IRE verb. Yeah, there we go. All right. Now we get to translate. I personally, was, these are important exercises. Don't get me long, but I find them somewhat boring. <laughs> these are a little more interesting. Uh, what do we got? 12 hey, yeah, it's it's getting close to nine o'clock. Do you want to save this for the next session? Or do you want to move forward? Well, let's see here. We got one, two, three. I'll tell you what, let's do this. I want to talk about the Regina Chaley. OK, yeah, I figure since Alex isn't here and. Uh... Yeah, that's true. We got to give him some. Yeah, we, we got to make him answer all the next set, right? <laughs> <laughs> That wasn't what I was getting at, but okay. <laughs> yeah, I won't tell him that. He may, may, you know, if, if he's, so you he's know having he's cardiac uh, testing, it. then uh, we don't want we don't want to make it any worse. Anyway, uh, yeah, I was looking at the time, ten minutes. Anyway, during the Easter season, that is from Easter until Trinity Sunday, the Regina Chaley is used in place of the Angelus and as the concluding Marian antiphon for complying. Now. There are actually four traditional Marian antiphons for complying. The Salve Regina, uh, the Ave Regina Celorum, the Regina Celi, and hmm, what's the fourth? It's blanking, oh well, anyway. Uh, the Regina Chaley is, um, it was composed sometime between the 9th and 12th centuries. We're not really sure when, nor are we even certain who. Uh, you will hear it as the closing hymn at Annunciation. And I can say this with great confidence because I've already heard it <laughs> uh, at Mass. So I thought I would uh, put, pop it up here. It's pretty easy. Oh, and what I've done, okay, this is the, the, the hymn or the antiphon itself, but I gave you the, um, this is what is recited privately <coughs> at, at Compline or Night Prayer. So I thought I would throw that in uh, for everybody. But Regina Celi, Queen of Heaven. Leitare. Oh, there it is. What is Leitare? Rejoice. Yes, but what form is that verb? Imperative. Yes. But what imperative form? That looks a lot like an A-R-E infinitive, doesn't it? 
right? Right. Right. And so lauda, as laudare, the, the imperative form is lauda or laudate. Passive voice. Okay. This is in passive voice form. Laudor, or, or sorry, Lator is um, a deep, uh, um, a uh, deponent word, verb. And let me, Lator, there we go, which um, is, is a passive verb. And so this is the imperative passive form, which is why, let's scroll back to here. I put the, um, oh, well, actually, no, let me go to here. Whoops, too far. Uh, see, laudare. Okay. So this is um, passive form. But yes, it means to rejoice. And then the alleluia. Quia, quem meruisti portare. I see, we, we had quia. I think we've had quia, yeah. For now, we haven't had quem yet. Uh, whom for he whom or whom you merited to you didst merit to bear portare to carry to bear to bear children. Resor exit, he has risen, sequit dixit, as he said. These are both um, uh, past tense, perfect form is what it's known as. We haven't had that yet. But just wait. Uh, next unit is the imperfect form. And then the unit after that is the future form. And then the unit after that is the past tense or perfect form. So we're not too far away. Ora pro nobis Deum, pray for us to God. Alleluia. So it's pretty easy to follow. Not um, Gaude, rejoice. Et letare, and be glad, Virgo Maria, quia sarexit dominus vere, alleluia. And then I'm, I'm not going to worry about the, uh, the um, prayer. You can kind of work your way through it. But I did want to mention that is a passive voice verb. And of course, that is as well. And I also wanted to make uh, one other uh, comment is um, during the Easter season, the um, custom has fallen off rather sadly in the West. Uh, in the Easter season, one would greet one's friends, Christus resurrexit, which means Christ is risen. And the reply is, surrexit dominus vere, truly the Lord is risen. Uh, the Greeks, and the Eastern churches still retain this custom. Uh, they will say, Christos aneste. And uh, the reply is, uh, Alitos aneste. Same thing, Christ is risen, truly he is risen. So um, it would be nice if we could remember that and greet at least our fellow Catholics during the Easter season. And you can even do it in English, unless they, you know, if you don't want them to think you're really nerdy so okay um i got a bunch of stuff for my easter on my website um by the way in the pdf you should be able to open the pdf and just click on this because these are live links um this is the video we watched last time that was about easter um since uh, not everybody was show, we, we were even lighter uh, last time, I think. Uh, I showed you a, a movie in Latin about Easter. It's very easy to follow. Uh, it will use a vocabulary that, you know, you don't know. But hey, you know, you know what's going on, okay? <laughs> I mean, it could even be in, in Chinese, maybe. But you and you would still know what was going on. There's pictures and everything, so um, it does have subtitles, so you can uh, you know work a little bit on that. And um, but do go to that web page if you get a chance because there's a whole bunch of stuff, a lot of hymns, various other uh, things that are on there. 
Okay, we will. Okay. Um, um, I have a sure. bunch of questions on the uh, Facebook post on how to access um, the things you posted um, with the, the previous recordings because I can't find them. Oh. Okay. Um, short explanation. You, yeah, because it's not it's not clear if they're on Facebook or no, no, they're on YouTube. They're all on YouTube. Okay, there wasn't a link, so I couldn't find a single one. Well, okay, hold on, hold on. Let me show you. Let me show you. Let us hold on. Oh, there it is. Okay. In, in particular, I was looking for. All right, all right. Hold on. Last. Let's Thursday. go up here. Let us go to YouTube. All right, here is YouTube. Uh, search for Annunciation Catholic Church. And uh, let's see here. Ah, now this should be a familiar looking symbol, right? Because obviously there's more than one Annunciation Catholic Church. Yeah, so all I found was a bunch of PDFs. Hold on. No, this is YouTube. We're on YouTube. There are no PDFs on YouTube. And then you go to channels. Whoops, playlists. Sorry, it's playlists. And then you will so see to follow a link. We need to look at the notes that you email to us then, right? This is the Annunciation Latin class. <coughs> there we go. And so if we, uh, <coughs> excuse me. Um, where'd the last one go? I posted it. Oh, interesting. It only has 17. Yeah, that's what I found. That's weird. I put up 18. How do you put 18 in the playlist, though? Because it's possible that it might just only. Yeah, let videos. me see. If, yeah, let me see. If, now, don't everybody look at my um, uh, my uh, pa secret passwords here. <laughs> Come on. Oh, there we go. Uh, Come on. There we go. Password. Yeah, my password is dot, 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 dot. Okay. So, Annunciation Catholic Church. Uh, ah, it says movie night. The Annunciation Latin class. For each of them. Turn off autoplay. Okay. Uh, where did movie night go? Zero. Second homework adjectives. I don't see. Oh dear, where'd it go? Uh, hmm. Well, I uploaded it. Hmm. I found it, but I didn't get to it by the way you did. I just went to the Annunciation website. Oh, you know what? Here we go. I will bet you. Yep. Yeah, there it is. it is. All right. Okay. Okay. I need to edit that. Well, let's get started. And put that in. Oh, dear. Oh, okay. I get to edit the video. And da, 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 da. okay. Go away here. All right. Ah, here it is. Playlists. That is what I forgot to do. There. Sorry about that. All right. Um, that should fix it. So I will go back to this. OK, so we go to the Annunciation Catholic Church website. And then, but um, I mean, YouTube channel. Right. And then we go to playlists, but there's only one. That's right. My class. Okay. 
and oh movie night okay there it yeah, is now you. that was my mistake i as uh, as uh, adam mentioned i i forgot to click the um it is part of the playlist do you have your links in the description for each of the videos yes i do okay all right then should I'll be there it. all right cool beans so all right so for next time do all that Oh, wow. What is my problem with my copying and paste? There we go. Uh, yeah, reread units one through seven. Let's not do unit eight yet. Uh, we'll want to finish up the uh, these. Although if you, um, if you want to take a peek at unit eight, uh, go right ahead. Uh, the nice thing about the imperfect form, by the way, not only do you get the imperfect form, but you get both the active and passive forms. Uh, so um, we've crammed, you know, in the past we did one conjugation and then we did the next three for the, for the um, uh, present tense. And then for the passive, we did all four. Well, the next one we're gonna do uh, um, all eight, meaning the uh, all four conjugations, both active and passive. Now that may seem daunting, but you'll find that the imperfect form is thoroughly regular through all four conjugations, both uh, active and passive. And so it's actually a very easy one to do. So Collins elected to cram it all into one, one unit. Uh, we may spread it out a little bit, um, only because it's a lot to uh, memorize in one shot. So anyway, any questions? Because I think it's time to sign off. I have one quick question that's not related to class. OK. Is there a word for caterpillar? Because when I was looking for that earlier today, the closest I could find was worm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I saw that. You were close. Um, oh, dear. I was All looking right. through my dictionaries. I couldn't find it. Yeah, OK. I'm going to show you something. Oh, hold on just a second. Oh, I am getting my Smith's English Latin Dictionary, which by the way has, uh, oh, about 800 pages. And it's just for that sort of thing. I will look up Caterpillar. Just to see, I'm sure that little exercise. I did learn a few new words this afternoon, so it was helping to expand my vocabulary. Oh yeah, no, that's the way to do it. Let's see, caterpillar, C A T I, C A T E R. Sorry, C A. Oh yeah, C A T E R. That's the problem with English. It has. Um, uh, Let's see, carry a long car, cash, uh, mm -hmm. catastrophe. Let's see here, ABC, catechism, catechize. You said C, aha, uh, uh -huh, here we go. Oh, yes. Interesting. Caterpillar is an eruca. Let me uh, put that in the chat window. Uh, no place for me to put my book. Okay, E R U C A. And let me double check E R U C A. Oops, Latin. Yeah, caterpillar. Okay. And I uh, think I don't see it. Pardon? I don't see oh, it. Oh, sorry. I sent it. <laughs> I didn't send it to everyone. I didn't see that. Uh, so there. That should be in a, in a you're in a respectable Latin dictionary. Okay, so that's the feminine. Uh, that's a, a first. Yep. Uh, yep. Okay. All right. Didn't know caterpillars were feminine, did you? Well, they're kind of soft and squishy, so. <laughs> yeah, uh, Pliny mentions it. 
uh, along with a couple of other authors. Yeah, what I was going to tell you. Oh, all right, let me turn on my. Where's my? Uh, where's my uh, video? Video. Yoo-hoo. Oh, here it is. There we go. All right. Let's see if I. There we go. I'm trying to do this so you don't get the glare from the lights there. This is a English to Latin dictionary. It is quite large. It's known as the Writer's Dictionary. And I use that when I am looking for the, a good uh, word um, um, for a particular uh, English word. Let me switch back. There we go. Whoop. Stop video. There we go. Um, because, uh, you know, if you just look up a Latin word, if you just um, pick an English word, uh, well, we had that earlier about the poor guys being had. <laughs> you know, had has uh, a number of different meanings. And so you use one of these uh, uh, writer's dictionaries and you go to the entry and you look through the various senses of, in English of the word. And so um, I bought that one recently, um, uh, Bolchesi Carducci. By the way, I have a version of this from the 1850s. And I mean, it, that's how old it is. The book was, is over 150 years old. It's a bit fragile, uh, but Bolchesi Carducci uh, republished that book. And actually, this is a slightly later edition, which is even better because it's got some of the corrections in it. I will try and put that in the uh, charts next time in case you're interested. It wasn't super expensive. It was about $35. Um, and if you're going to try and write Latin, um, sentences, phrases, etc. Then I recommend the uh, the the, um, the dictionary. Um, it's it's wonderful in um, in um, uh, getting the right nuances of some of the words. So okay, well now I know. So, and actually, and I, I should have. I, I actually, I've seen that word before. I should have remembered it. But there aren't too many caterpillars in the uh, in the bio, no. in the, in the you have locusts, but no caterpillars. <laughs> what? You have locusts, but no caterpillars. Yeah, we got lots of locusts. <laughs> <laughs> yes, not many caterpillars. All right, All right thank you. You're welcome. So let's uh, do our closing prayer, and that way I can get the trash out tonight in time. In nomine Patris, et Filii, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Pater Noster, qui es in celis, sanctificetur nomen tuum. Adveniat regnum tuum, fiat voluntas tua, sequent in celo et in terra. Panem nostrum quotidianum da nobis hodie. Et dimite nobis debita nostra, sequent et nos dimitimus debitoribus nostris. Et nos inducas in tentationem, sed libera nos amalo. Amen. So uh, that's the end of class. I will stay on for just a few minutes uh, in case there are any last minute questions.